What up guys and welcome back to Thomas Reacts here on the 360 experience with myself Thomas Mabaso. Spread the fire, welcome back to SMWX for another episode and today we are analyzing the 2024 election. By the way, all the way up to the election, we're starting a new series here on SMWX, The Road to 2024, where I will be periodically taking you through questions to consider as the election approaches and we are starting because we are just months away from the election in 2024 many say this could be a watershed election many say this could be the most important and most groundbreaking election since 1994 let's have a look and see whether that's true so in today's video i want to look at firstly the background to this election Secondly, I want to take a look at the polls and where parties stand in terms of numbers as well. Thirdly, I'm going to look at some of the provincial dynamics of this election because we often look at the national picture, but the provincial picture is just as maybe even more important. Then after that, I want to take a look at how opposition parties have done what they call the Moonshot Pact, which has turned into the multi-party charter, and have a look at whether that is really something that is historic or whether it is just a storm in a teacup. And finally, we are going to look at some of the rare scenarios that could emerge from this election that some people haven't spoken about yet. So with all that said, let's get into today's video and start with the background to the Groundbreaking, question mark, 2024 election. Okay, so let's come to the background of this election. And the first thing is, when is the election actually going to be held? So let's have a look at that. So according to South African law, the constitution, mm -hmm. as well as the election laws which flow from that, a national election in South Africa has to be held every five years. So what does that mean? The last national election, national general election, which is different from the local government elections. So a national election is when we elect members of parliament and therefore the, the president who gets elected from parliament and then the president appoints the cabinet. So the group of people who run the country in terms of laws and the executive so the, the 2024 election has to happen five years after the last election, which was in 2019. But let's get more specific, because the last election in 2019 happened on the 8th of May that year. So five years from there would be technically the 7th of May. It has to happen before the 8th of May. But the law allows for a 90 day period from the end of the last election. So 90 days after the 7th of May, 2024, the election can happen in any period after that. So what does that mean in practice? The election is going to be somewhere around the 8th of May until the 5th of August. And the president gets to decide exactly when that will happen. Now, all of South Africa's elections have tended to happen either in April or in May, but there's nothing preventing them from happening a little bit later. So we could actually have a winter election. Hey, how do you think South Africans are going to receive that, man? Do you think that South Africans are going to welcome the whole idea of having a winter election after they've seen what happened there in Zimbabwe, man? You remember, guys, what happened in Zimbabwe. Mnangawa literally stole the elections right in front of everyone. And Ramaphosa was there cheering him on. And right now, Susan Pofi is talking about winter elections. Man. Which would not be fun. Please, can that not happen? In, like, June or July, we could have one in, as I say, early August. Or we could have one in the typical time, which is probably around uh, late April, early May. Um, or, or from May onwards, technically onwards from the 8th of May. So that's roughly when you can expect the election to happen. What about where the different political parties sit in terms of the last election? Let's refresh our memories as to who holds what power and what power could shift going up until 2024. So let's take a look at the ANC. 
the ANC is currently sitting at 57.5% of the national vote in parliament, which equates to 230 seats out of 400 seats. The DA, on the other hand, is sitting at just over 20% of the vote, which is 84 seats. The EFF is sitting on just over 10% of the vote, and it has 44 seats. And then the fourth biggest party is the IFP, mm -hmm. which has nearly 4% or 3.4%. So they're on 14 seats. The Freedom Front is the fifth biggest party, and they have 2.3% or around 10 seats. So that's where we are. But let's also take a look at some of the, the trends and the shifts, right? So the ANC is currently at 57, but it has been trending downwards. So in 2019, the election, uh, the most recent election, it got 57. In the election before that, the 2014 election, the ANC was at 62%. So you can see that its share of the vote has fallen by nearly 5% since that election. Ah, it's not and the much. ANC has been trending downwards since 2009, I believe. Now, the DA, sitting at 20%, actually also fell somewhat from 2014, where they were at around 22%. So they shaved off about 1.5% of their... And when it comes to the DA, man, I've always said that it's going to be interesting to see how the Democratic Alliance is going to react if John Stenison does not outperform Musi Maimani. You remember, man, the, the, the Democratic Alliance, they, they traumatized Musi Maimani by calling him a failed experiment. Man, the man has never healed ever since then. Musi Maimani has never healed ever since the DA called him a failed experiment. That's why I'm saying it's going to be very interesting to see how the DA is going to spin this one because you remember the last election, Musi Maimani was basically scapegoated there. They blamed everything on Musi Maimani. But right now, they have someone they actually like. They have John Stenhazen. And do you think that John Stenhazen is going to take the DA maybe from 20 to 25? Personally, I don't think so. It's going to be very hard for the DA man not to, to, to fall maybe to, to 15 or something like that. It is going to be hard for the DA. But it seems like the, the, the leadership there in the, in the Democratic Alliance, they seem to, to trust John Stenhazen. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the DA is going to, to, to play this whole out. Because if John Stenhazen outperforms Musi Maimani, man, I'm telling you, Musi Maimani, your career is done. If John Stenhazen outperforms you in 2024, they're going to say, yes, we were right by saying that this Musi Maimani is the one who caused our party pain. Man, you better hope that John Stenhazen does not outperform you. Because if John Stenhazen outperforms you, man, your career is done. The Democratic Alliance is going to, to, to turn you into a template. They're going to turn you into an example, man, in their, in their conferences. Don't be like Muslim Imani. That's what the Democratic Alliance is going to do. And that's what John Stenhazen is hoping for. That he outperforms you. So that the, the, the claims of the Democratic Alliance calling you a failed experiment becomes legit. Man, if the DA does better under John Stenhazen, man, they, they, like, man, they're going to turn you into a template. I'm telling you, Musi Maimani, the young people there in the Democratic Alliance are going to be writing exams about you. Fat. A vote between the elections, which is interesting because the ANC is falling, but the DA also fell. The EFF, on the other hand, from a lower base, grew. So in 2014, it was at around 6%. And then in 20. 19 it grew to as i say just shy of 11 percent so it grew by about four and a half percentage points yeah but the the, the, the eff has grown about like four and a half percentage but i mean sometimes you really have to be honest man when the when the eff say that they are going to win the the, the, the elections in, in in an outright majority man <laughs> <laughs> you listen to some of these statistics and you hear the, the, the economic freedom fighters saying that they're going to win the elections in an outright majority and you are like man man these are the kind of dreams that Faro was talking about me <laughs> and guys 
And this conversation is also for you. What do you think the ANC is going to do in 2024? How do you think the Democratic Alliance is going to do in 2024? And how do you think the Economic Freedom Fighters go, is going to do in 2024? In percentages, guys. In percentages. I want you to tell me in percentages. So what we have is an interesting situation and scenario where we have three parties, the three biggest parties, and of course there are other important parties that we'll discuss in this election, where the two biggest parties are trending downwards from a relatively lower base, the EFF, the third party, has been growing, but that growth is also in question in this election, and the question is, will that trajectory continue? So I guess if we take a step back, what some of the background questions are, Actually, the three biggest parties all have some pressure on them. The ANC has big pressure on it because is this going to be the election where it goes below 50%? Or even if it just clings on to its 50% majority, that's still not a great look for a party that continues to lose support every election. So it's under pressure to reverse this trend of losing support and especially not to get below 50. But the DA, on the other hand, hmm is also under pressure because if they lose support and go below 20%, which they've been comfortably above in some elections, then what does that mean about the DA and the fact that they will have effectively suffered a, a technical recession in <laughs> voter support? They will have gone backwards in two successive elections. Yeah. So John ha Steenhuisen has his work cut out to make sure that the story of the DA isn't also successive electoral declines. The EFF, on the other hand, as I say, has been growing from a low base. But the, the pressure on the EFF is, will it continue to grow and will it continue to increase its support or will it stay relatively stagnant? Stagnant. So the EFF needs to demonstrate that after getting 10%, it can go higher to the 15 uh, area of the, mm. of the electorate. If it stays stagnant at 10, then that could suggest that there's some kind of ceiling at play. So actually the three big parties, as it were, have different kinds of pressure on them. And it's possible that all three could could actually be disappointed at the end of the election, or one will do well and the other two won't, and there are various permutations. So that's just a backdrop of where we are in terms of the election and in terms of when we can expect the election to happen. And we are entering one of the most important seasons in South African political history so now let's have a look at what some of the polls are telling us and what some of the by-elections have told us in terms of what we can expect performance-wise from multiple different political parties. You see, when, when, when you talk about the polls, man, I will never listen to the polls, man. The polls, I will never listen to the polls. You remember in 2016 when it was uh, Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump? You remember... When the polls said that Hillary Clinton is going to win that election, there's no way that Donald Trump is going to win the elections. Every poll out there was favoring Hillary Clinton. But after that, Hillary Clinton lost the elections. And after that, guys, I, I swear, I, I, like I swore no, never to listen to the polls. I don't care what the polls are saying. I don't care what the polls are saying. Because right now, the polls are being, are, are being manufactured, man. You look at... John Stenison, John Stenison, he always talks about these polls that you don't know where they conduct these polls and, and everything. They always talk about the polls, but the polls will, will disappoint you, man. If the polls didn't disappoint the people during the, the, the American election in 2016 between Hillary Clinton and, 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 and President Trump, <laughs> man, people thought that Hillary Clinton was going to win that election. Everyone thought that Hillary Clinton was going to win the election. Why? Because the polls said so. So when it comes to the polls, man, I'm sorry, man. I'm not in favor of the polls. Spread the fire, fam. This is just a quick reminder that if you'd like to buy one of my two books, The New Apartheid or Democracy and Delusion, which have both been bestsellers in South Africa, click the link below. If you. So I think one interesting... 
Sizwe mpofis na au advertising himself. And guys, I told you that I need a chair, man. I, I also need a chair. If I am also going to take time, like, Sizwe mpofu walsh. I also, guys, I need a chair. The chair that I'm, I, 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 I'm doing this podcast on is uncomfortable, man. That's why sometimes I do these videos in short forms. I don't have a chair. I need a chair. So I will appreciate every contribution that you guys can make. Because you can see that even yesterday, BZA underscore nine one he contributed one hundred and five rent. He contributed one hundred and five one hundred and five rent. After he heard me saying that I need a chair because I I, I want to do a longer streams, I want to do a longer form of content. He said that I cannot buy you a chair, but I can contribute a bit. Get yourself a nice office chair when you can and thank you for your content. And I just wanna say again thank you BZA for this small annual contribution. It really means a lot to me. As I am budgeting for, 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 for my own chair. I need a proper chair, guys. The chair that I'm using now is it, 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 a bit uncomfortable. So if you are good, if you are a bit well off, you, you, you can contribute, guys. Please. Interesting way to look at the election is to take a look at some of the data that has come out since the election uh, happened and try to make sense of it. Now, I'm not a pollster, but what I do enjoy doing is looking at what polls come out and trying to interpret and make sense of those polls. And there are reasonable ways that you can do this. One of the most familiar ways is to look at many different polls and take the average of those polls, and that can sometimes point you in an interesting direction. I've done this for previous elections, just for my own interest. And you get the general ballpark. Obviously, you can't even polls themselves um, are, are hardly ever exactly predictive. But what they do do is they rule out various scenarios. So I think, unfortunately, we're in an impoverished polling environment in South Africa, and it would be nice to see a lot more regular polling and polling of different questions. But we have to work with what we, what we have. So we know that Ipsos has released um, what it calls the Pulse of the People, where it checks political party support. And we know that uh, the Social Research Foundation has also done some political party support. And we know that there have been a number of by-elections in South Africa since the local government elections that we can have a look at. I'm not going to bore you with a long statistical diatribe. What I will tell you is my conclusion, which is that looking at where the polling is right now, and of course that can change and we'll continue to follow it as the election goes, the ANC seems to be in somewhere around just over or just under the 50% mark. What are your thoughts on that, guys? Do you think that the ANC is just maybe 51% or 49 So it's going to be really fascinating in this election to see which side of that 50% line the ANC falls. It's, of course, also going to be dependent on a number of things going forward. Now, I think... The state of service delivery is, is obviously key to that and load shedding is obviously key to that. Now, mm -mm. it looked like the ANC had load shedding, quote unquote, getting under control. And then suddenly out of nowhere, we're back into stage six. And the election's not far away, which you also have to remember. Like the ANC... Man, the elections are not so far away. But I'm telling you, if the ANC can get load shedding under control maybe for two months before the elections people are going to vote for the african national congress if these guys they can get this whole load shedding thing maybe just two months before the 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 the, the, the elections they're gonna win the elections because people will say nope I, I i i wanted to vote anc out because i i don't have electricity but now i've been having electricity there's no need for me to <laughs> to, to, to 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 vote for any other party and that's what people have been saying here on the count. That's what people are saying on the count. You'll hear some people saying that, ah, you know, if it wasn't for this load shedding, man, if it wasn't for this load shedding, uh, 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 I would be voting ANC out. People are saying that, man, you see this this time, and 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 with this load shedding, I'm going to be, I'm going to vote ANC out. And and and, and the ANC, what do they do? They say, right now, stage six goes down, and now we have stage two. And guess what? People are happy with that. People are happy with that. And I can guarantee you today, guys, that if the African National Congress can get the, the, the load shedding under control for simply two months before the election, just make people forget about load shedding just a bit, 60 days 
of constant electricity. I'm telling you, people are going to vote for the ANC. They're going to forget that today, on the 18th of September 2023, they didn't have electricity. They're going to forget that. They're going to forget. You cannot bank on load shedding. You can't bank bank on load shedding because the ANC knows what they are doing. And the ANC knows that if they can get this thing just under control. Man, you can see people people get so frustrated and furious with African National Congress when it comes to this whole thing of load shedding. But as soon as the load shedding is controlled a bit, people are now happy with African National Congress. Even people who said that I was never going to vote, I was, I, I, I was going to vote the African National Congress out. But when the load shedding gets in control, people will hear people saying that. I guess I'm sticking with African National Congress. They are doing everything they can for, for, for my electricity. So I'm telling you, if the African National Congress gets the load shedding under control for two months before load sh before the elections, they are going to win the elections. And no one is going to, 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 to be out there criticizing the African National Congress about the load shedding that people are not exper uh, experiencing. That's why I'm saying that if these guys, they can get it under control for two months, you cannot be out there campaigning, telling people that the, the, there is no electricity in the country, whereas every house has electricity. You cannot campaign on load shedding because if they get it under control, then 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 what? Then what? It should be doing everything in its power to prevent. And service delivery, guys, stop talking about service delivery. Service delivery, it is not a factor when it comes to the elections. Service delivery it is not a factor when it comes to service to, to, to the elections. Service delivery has never been a factor when it comes to the elections. It is not our first year. South Africa for years. We've had a lack of service delivery in this country for years. For years. So now people are saying that now nah, the ANC is doing a bad job when it comes to, 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 to service delivery and they might lose the election. Man, service delivery is not a factor. The ANC will not lose the elections over service delivery. They are not going to do that. They have won the elections a time and time again. Where people say that, okay, this time the ANC is done. Remember that in 2019, people said that the African National Congress is done. Everything is bad in this country under Jacob Zuba. You can see what, 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 what like they've turned our, our, our government into a mafia state. People were saying that. They were saying that like the African National Congress is done because they are basically doing nothing for people. But they still voted for the African National Congress. So do not underestimate South Africans and their loyalty towards the African National Congress. It doesn't matter what the African National Congress does to South Africans. It doesn't matter. You need to understand that. It doesn't matter. So service delivery and load shedding, they are not factors. You cannot campaign on that. You cannot. You cannot campaign on the African National Congress or, or, or on, 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 on load shedding and on service delivery, man. South Africans have never experienced a nice service delivery. Have never. We have never experienced a nice service delivery. South Africans have ne have, haven't experienced a nice infrastructure for such a long time. Just go to your malls, wherever you are, go to the malls and see, and see how the infrastructure it is right now. Go to our parks. Man, we used to have beautiful parks. Under Jacob Zuma, man, well done to Jacob Zuma, man, I must say. That under Jacob Zuma, man, we had we had a lot of things, man. We had nice parks. Our malls, we had like these kind of nice places where you can go with your children and everything. But now it's nothing. Now it's nothing. Even the robots, man, the robots are out. The Nyaope boys, like the robots are out. You can't say nothing. So do not tell people about, do not tell me about service delivery. Man, service delivery is not a factor when it comes to, 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 to our voters, man. Service delivery is not something that is going to kick out the African National Congress, man. It is not. Yesterday I told people that I said that if there was one thing that I thought that was, was going to take down the African National Congress, it has to be load shedding. But guess what? The people in the ground have gotten used to load shedding. People are saying that, no, we prefer the schedule from... 12 p.m. or 2 p to p to 2 p.m. You hear people saying that I don't like it when 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 the lights are out from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Man, it's cold. I prefer the lights to be out maybe from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. That's what people are saying. People have gotten used to load shedding. So even right now, coming to our uh, coming to our communities, coming to the township, and telling the people that they don't have electricity, man, it's nothing. It's nothing. Half of the township, they don't have electricity because half of our townships are informal settlements. So people are used to the idea of not having electricity. <laughs> 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 
man i feel sorry man i'm telling you i feel sorry for all of these opposition parties man i feel sorry for people who think that the lack of service delivery and load shedding is going to be a factor going into 2024 man i feel sorry for you i feel sorry because you are simply refusing to understand that elections after elections man for 30 years the african national congress hasn't done like they haven't been servicing our people for 30 years they haven't delivered this service delivery they are always talking about they haven't delivered that service delivery in 30 years and people still went out there and voted for the african national congress so don't ever think that this thing of load shedding and service delivery it is a factor it is not a factor south africans will vote for the african national congress no matter what <laughs> terrible stages of load shedding and it still can't get us out of that remember how we said we avoided stage six and winter mm. next thing you know cold front stage six and here we are so the more misgovernance the further and further away from that 50 percent mark i think the anc is falling so we know the historical trends which we've looked at we know some of the current polling and that seems to be roughly the ballpark Maybe that suggests that, you know, people's uh, talk of a complete ANC electoral collapse is a little bit premature. I mean, who knows how bad things could get before now in the election, but don't underestimate the ANC's electoral machinery. When the ANC kicks into gear, well, if the ANC could govern as well as it campaigns, we'd probably be living in a utopia. Sizwan Bovi is telling you guys, do not underestimate the African National Congress. Do not underestimate the loyalty of south africans towards the african national congress do not underestimate that i'm telling you guys Panyaza Sufi said that people must judge the african national congress for what they have done since 1994 that's what they are going to tell the people that the african if without the african national congress you wouldn't have water without the african national congress you wouldn't have these rdps that you are living in without the african national congress you wouldn't having you wouldn't be having the sasa grants without the african national congress you wouldn't have be having this 350s without the african national congress you wouldn't be having these and the guys this is what the african national congress is going to do they are saying that the people must judge them for what they have done since 1994 forget about the wasted five years of ramaphosa forget about that but you need to understand what we have done for the people since 1994 and that's how the anc is going to, to, to that's what the anc is going to say to our communities and and then i'm telling you this message is going to work it is going to work if you thought that ANC using apartheid was a was a bad thing, man, this whole thing it is only bad to people who who, who are out there consuming information and everything but people on the ground people in the townships man you cannot tell them anything about the african national congress when the african national congress starts to campaign and starts to tell people about apartheid when the african national congress starts to remind the people that we fought for apartheid when african national congress together with the sabc start playing these apartheid movies and apartheid documentaries man you are going to feel it you are going to feel it. Even people who said that they will never vote for the African National Congress will be considering voting for the African National Congress. That's how the strong. That's how. That's how strong the machine is, because these people are coming from all angles. You have to. You have to understand that these people are coming from radio. SBC is there. SBC is at the center of everything. SBC is at the center of everything. SBC is doing everything for the African National Congress. They're going to be coming from our radio waves. They're going to be coming from your television. They're going to be coming from your cell phones. And I'm telling you, this whole, like, this campaign strategy always works. You know, African National Congress, every time when it's election time, they come to our people and they tell them that, that guys, we understand as the African National Congress, we have done such horrible things. We understand that we haven't been managing to, to, to govern this country, but we are sorry for, for, for everything that we have done. But please, judge us for everything that we have done since 1994 and people listen to this message people on the ground listen to this message this is why i said rob hesov if you have these nice seminars where you can present the kind of ministers we can have the kind of the, the kind of presidency and everything man if you are not prepared to go to the grassroots if you are not prepared to go to, to the townships you are not prepared to take the fight from the african national congress i'm telling you you are not if you are not prepared to come to the townships, 
if you are not prepared to do these conferences in the townships, if you are not prepared to come to the townships and invite people to the stadiums and everything and try to show them what the African National Congress is doing to this country, man, you are not going to do anything. Because when the ANC starts to, 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 to campaign, when they remind the South Africans, the poor South Africans, majority of South Africans are poor, they don't have data, they cannot access the internet, they don't have the privilege of consuming the kind of information that we are consuming on the internet right now. Most of these people rely on the mainstream media for, 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 for the narrative and for what's important in the country. So if the SABC is starting to is that if the SABC tells the people that right now we are focusing on apartheid movies and we are up focusing on apartheid documentaries, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, there's nothing that these small and political parties can do about that. It's 2024. People are underestimating the African National Congress just like they did in, in, in 2019. People said the African National Congress is done in 2019. They won. And right now, people are saying that 2024 is our 1994. Man, the African National Congress is going to win again. Because African National Congress is not, it's not shy to get their hands dirty, man. It is not shy to get there. The African National Congress does not depend on the mainstream media to do everything. The African National Congress comes to the people. It doesn't matter how angry people are with the ANC. The ANC will come to the people. They will come to the people. They will apologize. They will kiss your feet. They will wash your hands. They will do everything. But they will come to your house. You, you saw last election day, Ramaphosa was kissing our grandmothers there. Man, you think that if Ramaphosa kisses one grandmother, man, the whole, the, like, all, 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 like, all, 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 all our adults are going to vote for Ramaphosa, man. Ramaphosa kissed the one Magogo and all of Magogos in South Africa, they voted for Ramaphosa. I'm telling you. All the Magogos in South Africa, they voted for Ramaphosa. Because Ramaphosa was kissing the Magogos there, washing their feet and, and, and kissing their hands. <laughs> Do not under guys. Do not underestimate the African National Congress and its election its election machine, guys. These guys are strong, man. These guys have got our people in on hold. I mean, you have to understand that a lot of South Africans are poor. A lot of South Africans depend on these grants. Majority of South Africans they depend on these grants. And if the African National Congress starts to remind people that and and starts to say. If it wasn't for the African National Congress, you wouldn't be having this grant. And if you vote for, for other party than the African National Congress, you are going to lose the grant. Man, do you understand how many people are going to go out there and vote for the African National Congress on that strength, on the fact that, no, they want to take my grant. I'm not going to do that. The African National Congress is going to tell the people that these opposition parties are trying to take away your grants. By the time you prove the African National Congress right, by the, by, by the time you prove the African National Congress wrong, in 2024, the elections will be all long done and the African National Congress will still be running this country. <laughs> I'm not laughing, guys. I'm worried. I'm telling you, guys. Do not underestimate this machine, man. This machine is heavy, man. It is not so easy, man. People need to stop underestimating the African National Congress and saying that the African National Congress is simply going to lose out the elections and everything, man. People are, are people forget the loyalty, the kind of loyalty that South Africans has towards the African National Congress. And you see right now, the African National Congress is fighting for its existence. You see right now, the African National Congress is starting to, to, to talk about apartheid. It's starting to talk about 1994 and everything. Man, the African National Congress is going to go all out in 2024. It's going to go all out in 2024. So if you want to take the fight away from the African National Congress, you have to be willing to get your hands dirty. Man. If you are not willing to come to the townships to get your hands dirty, you are not willing to, 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 to overthrow the African National Congress. You are not ready. So there's that. I think the DA, it's a little more difficult to, to know and to tell, but the DA also seems to be at least under threat of, of this falling below 20, 20 mark. And the EFF also seems to be under threat of a potential stagnation. So ultimately where we are, and we'll continue to follow the polls, keep taking averages of different polls and just 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 saying 
where we are. It's not an exact science, but what you can do is rule out crazy scenarios like, is the DA going to win this election? No, they're not. <laughs> uh, is the ANC going to get a two-thirds majority? No, let's not, let's not be silly. Is the EFF, as they often say, going to win a majority? No. No, they're not. The question is, where around the 50% mark will the ANC fall at this point? Will it be 45? Will it be 52? Uh, will the DA go below the 20 or will it be just above? Will the EFF start to push towards the DA and the DA fall so that they actually um, are kind of more equal in their power bases rather than the DA being at 20 and the EFF at 10? I think that's an interesting dynamic to watch. If the DA comes to like a 17 and the EFF goes to a 13 or 14, then suddenly the official opposition tag um, takes on a different dynamic. So that's kind of where we stand and how I'm looking at the situation right now. Having set the background and looked at some of the current data that we can take into account, and I'll speak a bit more about the by-elections as well when I go into provincial dynamics, let's look at what could happen in different provinces of South Africa. Because I think a lot of focus has been on what's going to happen at the national level. Will the ANC lose the cabinet, lose the presidency? It's possible, but it's still it's still probably more likely that the ANC will retain power and at least be the biggest party. But that doesn't mean that that still won't be a watershed election. So I want to take a look at some provincial dynamics to explore this election in some more depth. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so what are some of the provincial dynamics that we need to keep an eye on? Well, we know right now that the ANC dominates provincial government in South Africa. There's only one province that the ANC doesn't govern, and that is the Western Cape. But there are many interesting political storylines in this election, but I want to focus on three today. And we can get into more as the weeks and months unfold. The first is Gauteng, which the ANC governs by the skin of its teeth at the moment. <laughs> the second province is KZN, a province that the ANC over time won away from <coughs> the IFP, but is in serious danger of losing in 2024. And the final province is actually the Western Cape, because just as the ANC is in trouble in Gauteng and KZN, maybe some other provinces, the DA has had the majority of support in the Western Cape for a long time now, but that DA control over the Western Cape is also doubtful. So what happens in an election when, for the first time, many provinces are up for grabs? Well, there are various scenarios that we can potentially think through here. Let's take a look at KZN, for example, right? Is there a world in which if the ANC loses KZN, but they fall below 50% nationally, they can strike a deal with the IFP and say, okay, IFP, we'll give you control over KZN, which you have long coveted, and you give us support in the national government, or maybe we can give you some ministries there as well. And we'll do a deal where even though we lost the election and we didn't get our 50%, the IFP takes us over the 50% margin nationally and we govern and we give the IFP our support in KZN for them to form, form a government. So you can see how the provincial dynamics could influence the national dynamics and vice versa. And just on that scenario, it would be a fascinating historical moment because we know that the ANC and the IFP have a history of enmity, mm -hmm. particularly in the 1980s and 1990s, there was widespread political violence where around 20,000 people lost their lives, particularly in political violence between the ANC and the IFP. So it would be quite a surprising historical moment from that vantage point for them ultimately to come together in a unity pact in KZN and the national government. Now, of course, 
the IFP has has mm, uh, signaled mm, mm. that it wants to join the Moonshot Pact or the multi-party charter, which we'll discuss later. Yeah. But you can never rule out these things in politics. <laughs> I mean, the ANC and the IFP have a deeper history as well before the 1980s. In actual fact, um, Chief Mangosutu Butelezi, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi, um, may his soul rest in peace, who we recently lost, was actually very close to various liberation leaders. And the IFP and ANC were actually two sides of a similar coin in the early part of their history. And they fell out in the 1970s over two questions. One was the question of political violence. Um, apparently, uh, the IFP was strongly against the decision to uh, embark on armed resistance to apartheid, and also the extent of collaboration with the, the Bandustan homeland system. And that's where the rift was created between the two. But ultimately, could we see a fascinating historical reunion between the ANC and the IFP? It's maybe one of those scenarios that hasn't been discussed, but it seems one that is at least possible. So that's one way that provincial dynamics could influence the national dynamics in 2024. Another way that the provincial dynamics could influence the national dynamics is in the Western Cape. Now, if the DA loses its majority in the Western Cape and the ANC loses its national majority, then what you could have is a situation where the DA says to the ANC, we'll help you in the national government. Let's partner nationally. You help us in the Western Cape because we still want to govern the Western Cape. So you could have a similar scenario to the ANC IFP playing out, except this time it's an ANC DA pact where the ANC offers up, sacrifices the Western Cape and the DA sacrifices a little bit of influence in the national government. And we have this kind of provincial uh, trade off. Now, that would open the door to further ANC DA cooperation. In a previous video, by the way, last year, where I already started thinking about coalition scenarios, I was one of the first people to start talking about this potential grand coalition <laughs> between the ANC and the DA. Because even though they claim to be mortal enemies, one of the scenarios in 2024 is that they actually come together, form a joint government, and through a huge parliamentary majority, they can actually get a lot of things done. It would make a lot of people angry, but we've seen people like Snooki Zigalala, the ANC Veterans League mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. leader, actually saying, you know, we shouldn't rule out as the ANC working with the DA. We've seen the mayor of Cape Town, uh, Jordan Hill Lewis, saying, well, our first prize is to govern, but we need to keep out the EFF. So if it means we have to work with the ANC to do that, then we will do that. And John Steenhuisen has made similar overtures. Mm. So the Western Cape dynamics could militate towards this grand coalition. And that's another way that we need to understand the way the provincial dynamics could influence the national dynamics. Now, thirdly, we've got the question of Gauteng. Gauteng is a little bit more complicated because there are so many different parties that want to govern Gauteng. But once again, could we see something to do with the ANC and the EFF, for example? So the ANC could say, OK, EFF, you help us with our national majority, and we will help you to govern Gauteng. We will give you a Gauteng EFF premier and help us to be the national government. So as you can see, there are various other kinds of permutations. Gauteng is a lot more split than many of the different provinces, so we might see some kind of multi-party arrangement there. In Gauteng, could we see an opposition coalition coming together to govern Gauteng? That's another interesting question. Could we see the same kind of instability in Gauteng as we have seen in Johannesburg, which is one of the major cities in Gauteng, which in some ways has led people to be skeptical of the stability of opposition 
coalitions. So you'll see that even if the ANC, and it's by no means certain that the ANC keeps its national majority, there are still fascinating provincial dynamics that could make this a breakthrough watershed election for South Africa's politics. Here's the bottom line. If the ANC loses Gauteng, KZN, and the Western Cape, hmm. what does it really govern? It governs the remainder of the country, but the economy of the country, including its biggest cities and its biggest provinces, will be outside of ANC control. And the ANC will control those parts of the country, no less important, they're, they're crucial parts of the country, but many of the economic hubs of South Africa will slip from the ANC's grasp. You don't want that, man. Welcome to the <laughs> Sun Exchange, connecting the world. So guys, what are your thoughts, man, on this whole anal- analysis by, by, by Susan Pofu Walsh? What are your thoughts so far? Do you agree with him? You don't disagree with him? What are your thoughts? Guys, please, let's keep engaged. Please drop those comments, guys. Tell, tell me, what, what are your thoughts? I would like to know what is it that you think about this analysis that we are all watching right now. Okay, so let's have a look at the dynamics of opposition politics outside the ANC. Hmm. So the first big thing that has happened since we last spoke about the election is the so-called multi-party charter. The moon paint. Some question whether it's an interesting moment in opposition politics or is the multi-party charter a non-starter? That's the question. <laughs> I, for one, think that all the hype around this multi-party charter situation is completely overblown. Really? So we heard some political analysis uh, analysts suggest that this is a historic moment for the for the country. The A, uh, sorry, the DA, Action SA, the IFP, and various small, uh, if not minute, parties have come together to agree on a way forward for the election. The first thing, and this is the first time this has ever happened. Firstly, those political analysts unfortunately have very short memories. Uh, The IFP and the DA Mm. have actually joined forces before an election. Uh, This happened when Tony Leon was DA leader. And I can't remember what they called it. Uh, Comment below if, if you remember, it was some kind of cooperation. But we've already had those two parties saying that they are going to cooperate into an election. It actually didn't end very well electorally for them. And this was, you know, um, more than more than a decade ago, um, more like two decades ago. I think it was the 2004 election where they did this. So there's nothing new about South Africa's opposition parties trying to find ways to club together for the election. Furthermore, who are the real political parties here? Because unfortunately, we can exclude some of these tiny parties that, that are just going to be uh, decimal places, right? <laughs> Next to the comma. The DA, Action SA, and the IFP, in truth, are the real parties who got together for this a- agreement. Well, the D- well Action SA, um, actually, as Julius Malema recently observed, is an offshoot of the DA. So, no. I mean... It's not that hard to imagine that they would have similar interests and that they would be able to find each other because Herman Mashaba was a DA mayor. So there's nothing historic about Action SA and the DA cooperating. But to me, it makes no sense, man, because Herman Mashaba left the Democratic Alliance saying that he wants to do his own thing. He wants to do things the way he's comfortable with doing things. But now he's going back to to donate the votes to the Democratic Alliance at the same party that he left. I honestly don't understand and I don't know how the supporters of Action SA feel about this whole thing because I remember some people followed him in Mashaba because he had the guts to, to drop the, the Democratic Alliance. But right now, he wants to donate the votes to the Democratic Alliance. He wants to do that. The same party he left. So if you are a member of the Action SA, how do you feel about this whole thing? And like I said, the DN and the IFP have already cooperated before. 
So I, for one, struggle to see what's so historic about this uh, meeting that was held, ironically, at a, at a casino, I think. Um, cue jokes about people gambling with South Africa's future and all of that. I, I for one, don't see what's so historic about it. Um, the other question that I just have in my mind about this multi-party charter is, who wasn't there? Rise Mzansi, a new mm. party, wasn't there. Um, even the, was the ACDP there? No, I don't think they were there. Even if they were there, that, that does, ah, the Freedom Front Plus. Okay, that's another party that, that was there. But when you add up all of these, all of these parties, right, uh, Bosa, Musi Maimane's new party wasn't there. You would have thought if there was a historic opposition, uh, all the new parties and even some of the existing, all the UDM wasn't there, the ATM wasn't there, etc. A historic moment, of course, the EFF wasn't there. A true historic moment in South African politics would be all opposition parties coming together to say, we are going to form a new government and despite the myriad and vast differences between us, we believe we can find a common program. That's the only thing that could unseat the ANC. Huh? The moment you start excluding the ANC and the EFF from the equation, you're living in a dream world if you think that combination is going to fall below 50% in six months' time. So I'm not convinced that the multi-party charter represents a potential new government and I think, quite frankly, the attention given to it was, was vastly overplayed. Let's see if they can bring in more, more voices. Let's see if they can bring in more heavy hitters. But for now, it seems to me like the DA was only able to get a handful of already aligned parties to a table. And even since then, we've seen some of the fraying of that opposition coalition. So not convinced by this multi-party charter moment and its so-called historical importance. Let me know what you think about it down below. Comment on this and other parts of this video. Let's move into our final segment though, which is about some of the unlikely but very interesting potential national government scenarios that could come from 2024. Well guys, are you enjoying this so far? Are you enjoying this so far? I mean, I, man, I like Sizo. I mean, Sizo is such a brilliant analyst, man. I love this guy. He's such a brilliant analyst. Sometimes I know I don't agree with him, but the way he presents his stuff, it is quite interesting. I would really like to get to that space one day. <laughs> but guys, what are your thoughts, man, on this whole analysis that we are watching? I find it very interesting, man. Okay, let's get into our last segment. By the way, keep it locked on SMWX. Like, share, subscribe. Like, if, if you're just watching this channel all the way to the election, you're going to be one of the most knowledgeable people about this election because we're going to go so deep into this election. We're going to do it from a youth perspective. And it's just going to be better than the other places that are talking about the election. So like, share, subscribe, and let's continue to spread the fire and build this channel by word of mouth as we've been doing since 2019. Fun fact, this channel uh, came about because of the 2019 election. And here we are, nearly five years later, talking about the next one. Okay, rare scenarios. What could happen in 2024 that other people haven't spoken about yet? Because we know all the different coalition scenarios, and as I say, I've already done a video about that. Could be an ANC EFF government, could be an ANC DA government, could be an opposition coalition government. Those are all like likely scenarios. But we can't deny that there could be some very surprising and very spectacular things that could happen. So I want to talk about things that some political analysts have uh, not given so much attention to. So the first possibility is a minority government. What does that mean? It means that, for example, the ANC could not get 50%. But nobody would be able to create an opposition coalition against the ANC 
because there's so many parties and it's so hard to get people to actually agree on which position. So the ANC, even from below 50, would eventually form a government without a majority. What? Now, this has happened in, in many places, in many democracies. The most recent example was uh, the United Kingdom, where there have been many minority governments, but there was a, a recent one as well. So what would a minority government mean? Well, it would mean that the ANC would be able to form a government and form a cabinet and have the president. But they would rely on being able to convince shape-shifting and different opposition parties at different times of their legislative proposals. So when it comes time to pass a budget, they might be able to convince the IFP to support their budget. But when it comes to the land question, then the IFP would be against them, but then they could try and bring the EFF to support a land uh, law proposal. Man, I, 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 I swear the ANC would prefer that. Man. The ANC would prefer that. That sounds like the African National Congress, man. And then if it comes to some other question, they could maybe convince the DA. So the ANC would have this kind of moving majority, even though they would be a minority government. Now, of course, it's unlikely, much less likely than the other scenarios. But as South African politics has shown us, you can get a mayor from any party. Crazy scenarios can happen, and we shouldn't rule out the possibility of a minority government and at least understand what that could potentially look like. It could be an attractive option in some ways for the ANC because then they wouldn't have to go into a formal coalition with anyone. They would just pick off different MPs at different times. Another uh, unlikely scenario, by the way, is since we're going to get some independent candidates in parliament, you could see the ANC bringing a few independents into its government, and then you'd have like an ANC independent, not quite coalition, but uh, a co-optation of independents to get the ANC over its, its majority in parliament. <clears throat> what is another interesting and unlikely scenario? Well, you could have what's called a confidence and support agreement. This is kind of like what happened in Joburg, if you remember, between the EFF and the DA. The EFF said, we're not going to form part of your government in Joburg. This is when Herman Mashaba was mayor. But we will support you with our votes. So you don't go into a formal alliance, but you give voting support to the government, which is actually a minority government. But it's more of a formal um, agreement. So what you could have is the ANC, for example, going into a confidence and support agreement with one of the smaller parties where they say, look, if there's a vote of no confidence in our president or our government, you support us and you support us in terms of budget votes, but you don't become part of the government and we don't necessarily give you um, or trade off a whole lot of cabinet posts. This would allow the party that's in that confidence and support agreement to be slightly more independent from the ANC, but it would also create fascinating dynamics in terms of a government that didn't have a full majority but only relied on the confidence and support of another minority. So those are just two maybe outlandish but not impossible situations that could unfold after the 2024 election. I just thought of another one off, off the top of my head, which is also a little bit crazy. In some weird possible world what if what happened in Joburg happens nationally so let's say the ANC fell below 50 they were at like 45 all the opposition parties including the EFF and the DA clubbed together but instead of the leader of the biggest party like John Steenhuisen then becoming the president they were like we are going to take someone from a small party that we all trust and we're going to make them the president as a compromise between all of us. So they're just like, Bandu Holomisa will be the compromise president <laughs> of South Africa. It happened in Joburg. <laughs> you never know. Guys. <laughs> what are your thoughts, man? Jeez. What are your thoughts, man? This was a crazy rabbit hole, man. What are your thoughts on this whole thing that Season Pofu just said, man? Guys, please tell me what you think on the comment section. And again, guys, please, 
I'm going to be talking about this for quite some time now. Guys, I need a chair. I need a, a, a chair because the chair that I'm using right now, it is not comfortable. So if you can or if you are able to, to, to donate something so that we can get a new chair so that I can spend more time with you here, guys. Please do so. I would really appreciate it. Guys, please tell me what you think about this whole analysis on the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part, guys, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.